He had three days in a row above the 50-day moving average, finally took out last week's high. If it could confirm this channel tomorrow, right? Look how much room you have on that. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing okay. Hope everybody had a really uh, good day of trading. We'll get to the pivots in a second. But, you know, it's same again, same, different day, same theme. You got the Qs up nine days in a row. Uh, the Dow was down today at, at 1.200 points. Did anybody even notice? I, I literally looked up around... Two o'clock or so, and I said, "Wow, the Dow's down 200 points." At, at this point, nobody really cares anymore. They, they really don't. Uh, we're almost at that point that we're kind of on cruise control into uh, the end of the year. I don't think anybody anybody really cares at this point. Uh, the action is phenomenal. Um, the one troubling spot that we continue to see uh, are definitely these a lot of these fang names. Uh, apparently, Amazon. Uh, didn't get the message, right? Didn't get the message the market's hot. Uh, apparently, Alibaba doesn't get the message. Uh, NVIDIA that I've been literally watching for every day for this whole lifetime, I keep on saying, maybe today's the day, maybe today's the day. Ironically, this was actually my, uh, uh, my only hickey of the day today. Uh, again, these stocks are not getting the message. But what is continuing to be strong over and over again is the aggressive drive for speculation money. And again, they, they're just t taking turns right now. Stocks like VLDR, SPAC name, right? Closed to under 19 bucks. The stock is pushing, you know, 21 after hours. Uh, stock like PLTR, again, you saw an incredible aggressive option flow over and over again. This thing's up a buck and change uh, after the close as well. You saw another one, IPOC, another SPAC, right? Who, who, who could even keep up with these things? Uh, IPOC, uh, closed under you know eleven dollars, trading about eleven and a half right now after hours. So you're you're seeing the, the same themes being played out over and over again. Uh, weakness and a lot of gorilla mega cap names. Then you get rational or irrational rotation to these names once a day. Uh, they're still buying Tesla. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, Netflix finally broke out today. Tomorrow could be a really really aggressive day if they just confirm one more channel. We'll get to that in a second. Facebook woke up today. Apple woke up today. So it's really a, a stock picker's market because, again, you always have to take into consideration what has really gone up really aggressively and what still hasn't come out of those channels. Now, again, I, I try my best every single day. If you've been watching this video constantly over and over again, I'm not looking for the stocks that made that huge move already. They're gone. That play is over. We're looking for theme plays in the same group. Now, again, Tesla is a little bit of a different story. And, and again, you know, if all you guys have been watching, well, you know, look, especially in the weekend update, we talked about the 600 channel. We talked about the 608 channel. It's not that, you know, if you were paying attention to Tesla for the last five, six days, you saw how aggressive this channel was. And all we saw today was what happened technically when a channel that gets confirmed. Now, keep this in mind. I, I see a lot of new traders and, and you know, there's, there's two problems, right? The new trader is either chasing Tesla and they've never traded it before and they're chasing Tesla at, at crazy aggressive prices. And again, remember, stocks only break out at several, several intervals. They're either coming out of a very, very sneaky channel like it did here, the 52-week high we did here, or a channel confirmation that's putting the, the, the money to rest, kind of to sleep, putting the shorts and sellers at a very comfortable area. And that's exactly what happened over the 600 608 area. But the problem is a lot of new traders around, they're looking at Tesla and they're looking at it as it's it's a lottery ticket. One person turns around and says, the stock's going to 1,000. Why? Because you want it to go to 1,000, right? The other, uh, unfortunately, new traders talking about the stock is up too much. It can't go any higher. You, you're both wrong, right? <laughs> Stocks, th this stock doesn't need a reason to do anything, okay? Number one, keep this in mind. Just, just put this, uh, uh, just going into tomorrow's session, keep this in mind especially for the new traders, okay? Hedge funds been front running this December 21 inclusion now for about two and a half weeks, right? They, they know index funds need to start owning the stock after December 21st, so they're getting front run. The stock has ridiculous short interest. 
Um, and if you look at the options market right now, what I saw today was just incredible. Um, 650 weeklies, which is which looks like you know stocks five dollars away from 650. 650 weeklies, 690 weeklies, 700 weeklies, right? These are all weekly charts. So the idea that you could buy it at any price if you're a naive long bias trader, right, looking for a lottery ticket, you're wrong. The idea that some you heard some guy on social media say the stock is horrible, the fundamentals are horrible, right? We're not talking about fundamentals right now. We don't even care what this company does right now. At this juncture, this is a momentum runaway train. And if index funds continue to play catch up after December 21st, well, where do you think the stock's going to be? So technically, you know, this technically and fundamentally is a completely different story right now. And, and, and again, this is a stock right now that needs to be bought on any single dip, literally any single dip on the stock into the rising 60 minute support will continue to trap late shorts. That's exactly what happened. If you look at all of last week, that's exactly what happened all of last week on the bottom of the channel every single time on the bottom of the channel. So if this thing does give a dip tomorrow, okay, and there's, you know, there's is a chance it does give a dip right now. It's up three, four bucks after the close. But if this thing gives you a dip and gives you a dip into rising 60 minute support, the last thing you want to do is sell stocks into rising 60 minute support. That's where you want to buy the stock. Because again, if you believe in the theory that stocks trade from supply to supply and demand to demand, well, that's where you want to trap those eager, un un unfortunate, uneducated shorts. And again, stocks don't need to do what, what you think, right? Fundamentally, it doesn't make a difference what you think is going to happen next. The moral of the story is, Everybody knows there's a huge inclusion on December 21st. And if you, if you follow the patterns, right, if you follow the trend what Tesla's been doing and you watch the, the options market, you know, you, you know damn well they're, they're front running these index funds. So again, why take a short for the sake of it can't go any higher? And again, if you're on the long side, your first trade on Tesla should not be at $650 a share. Okay, this is just reality. So again, for you new traders, again, don't fall in love with the, you know, with the whole with the bright, uh, shiny, bright lights, it's it's all about value tiers. And if you find a value tier in the stock on a rising dip, that's a whole different story. But don't think for a second you're going to outsmart the market and make a cute profit in, in a stock that is incredibly, incredibly aggressive. Just, just kind of keep that in mind. So other than that, I mean, nothing really to talk about fundamentally uh, in the market. The market is on cruise control. Uh, nine days in a row, the queues are up. You know, logically, you say to yourself, well, it can't go up one more day until it goes up one more day. Again, there is no materialistic fact. This COVID vaccine news, it's out there. Everybody's waiting for it. So the idea that the co some sort of COVID news is gonna break, that's gonna change the dynamics of this market is false, okay? The narrative is already written. Everybody knows it. We're waiting for, uh, for um, the first round of vaccine news. So until that happens, you're not going to put yourself in a situation to see any aggressive nature. Again, think about it. COVID cases are spiking. The market doesn't care. Okay. The market does absolutely doesn't care right now. So the idea that something dynamically has to change within this market for the market to go lower is crazy. Until that happens, until we start losing the five-day moving average on the queues, we're going to be on cruise control. Can we have a down day? Of course. But again, as long as you're getting ridiculous money flow uh, and crazy speculation money in these names, especially like SPAC names that people are chasing over and over and over again, that's when you are literally, um, that's when you're literally going to get uh, the biggest aggressive moves and expansion uh, always takes place. So just keep that in mind. Uh, other than that, uh, again, we're just trying to find good value plays every single day. Like tomorrow, you know, I'm not looking uh, for something that was up, you know, 300% today, not named Tesla, right? It's very, very easy to fall in love with the stocks that already made their moves. But keep this in mind, they already made their moves. Okay, we're looking for the next one. So, for example, instead of, you know, looking for something extremely extended, just look at Z ZS. Maybe it doesn't go tomorrow, right? You can see it's putting in its second day today. You know, yesterday it traded, and Friday it traded a third of the uh, previous day's volume. Today it traded half of the previous volume for Friday. So something like this into a rising support in the next couple of days and if it holds, right, especially the five-day moving average, something like this will give you a higher probability return than something that just went from $10 to $14 and you're trying to flip it for 15 cents. It just doesn't make any sense. So a name like ZS maybe doesn't wake up tomorrow, maybe doesn't wake up the next day, but eventually it's going to test this rising five-day moving average. And I would rather take a shot, right? I'd rather take a shot on a remount on this five-day moving average than buy this thing, you know, 
three days later at the 52 week highs. Again, there is still value in this tape. Even a name like Peloton, right? That again was was grouped in on this whole stay at home movement. They're, they're sitting there above the 50 day moving average. Look at this tight flag. Eventually, when this Bollinger Band comes in, and it might come in for tomorrow, and it starts taking out this top of the channel, again, look how much room it has to fill in this whole gap. Again, you don't need to buy Peloton here and here and here and here. Again, look for the channels that are, that are starting to get tighter and tighter. And, and look at this channel, right? You're talking about a five day you know, channel, all five days closing above the 50 day moving average. That's a good thing, right? It's just a matter of time a play like this really starts to set off. Even a name like CHGG that I'm not really familiar with, but, but again, look how many days in a row it's basing above the 50 day moving average. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have nine days above the 50 day moving average. And if it could just control this whole channel and buyers start building over it, then you're going to have a better move. So there, there's still plenty of value in this tape. There really is. There, you just have to be very, very patient. And stop, you know, looking at the at the, the really shiny bright lights. You got to look at the, the tangible names that could had a big run that are consolidated right now and ready to go again. So even like Netflix, which I love, right? Which I absolutely love. We talked about the channels, and we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. You know, it looks it, it looks like it's, like it's ready to go, right? You had three days in a row above the 50-day moving average. Finally, took out last week's high. If it could confirm this channel tomorrow, right? Look how much room you have on Netflix. So there is still value, folks. And again, that, I, that's what you want to reiterate. Because remember, if you're continuing to buy highs, 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 eventually, when the musical chair game ends, the stock that we're taking out highs five, six, 12, 15 days in a row, and they're up 20, 25% above a major supply zone. Those are the ones that get pulled first. And, and these are facts every single time. So again, stay patient, look for value. And again, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Again, the market continues to be uh, really good. So let's talk about the tape. Again, uh, super aggressive today. I mean, there's, there's nothing really else to uh, turn around. Obviously, uh, and as much, uh, you know, this was definitely my trade of the day. I'm, I'm assuming uh, anybody who's trading on the feed and you know, at home or anybody else, this was your trade, right? I mean, how, how can you duplicate a, a better move than Tesla today? But uh, let's start off with Netflix. Uh, 505 was a sneaky area. That was a previous candles, channels high. 510 needs to confirm. You know, again, here is Netflix, right? Here is the 505 right here, right? Confirm 510, which was last week's high, and went right to this channel right here, and it paused today around the 518 area. Again, guys, this thing confirms this channel here. Uh, again, we saw 530 weeklies. We saw 550 weeklies come in on, on Netflix. So again, watch Netflix either a dip into rising 60-minute support or a break above this channel for tomorrow. Uh, again, Tesla, what are you going to say? Uh, 608, right? 608 needs to build. Again, this wasn't any crazy area that you know was super secretive, high-level stuff. This was last week's highs, right? This was last week's highs. Uh, hit the linear regression line, came back in, held the 10-day, yada yada yada. It took out 610 stocks trading 645 right now uh, after hours. Again, ridiculous, ridiculous move. Congratulations for all you guys who are still uh, holding a runner. This Nvidia man really pissing me off, right? Every day. This is going to be the day. This is going to be the day. It looked it looks so good today, right? So good today. So I get long the video, such a disappointment. So <sighs> I get long the video, right? So I missed the 547 because I was in I was in Tesla. So I missed the 547, puts in a new high of 549. So I figured to myself, all right, you know what? I know how important that, that top of the range is, right? I know how important this whole level is here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't want to use the word, I want to cheat on the entry, but I said to myself, you know what, if it starts taking out opening range highs above 547, because these stocks are so strong, there's a high probability it will at least test the top of the channel. And I bought NVIDIA and it just sat there and it sat there and it sat there. And I, and I could tell right away, uh, if the buyers can't control the opening range highs, this, this trade's not going to work. Um, so it's stalled, right? It's stalled. I wound up selling it down oh, like 50, 60 cents or so. It's, it's not the point of the money. It's just I'm so damn frustrated that this is literally the only one that doesn't want to go. Now, again, you can make a case while well, Intel was super, super weak today. Maybe it had a lot to do with the weakness in the video. But what about the other 12 days in a row that the, the, uh, Intel went higher? What the hell is the video doing then? So, again, very frustrating name, but I'm not giving up. I know what's going to happen is once I start 
to kind of be comfortable and I, the, with the idea that the video completely blows, that's when it's going to start getting above this channel and finally go. So again, I got it one eye watching it, but again, it is what it is. Uh, BIGC83 needs to confirm the 50-day moving average. Hey, again, nice little quick pop. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who took it. Here is the 83. It stopped right at the Bollinger Band. We kind of knew it was going to stop around that 85 area just because it's the upper Bollinger Band. So nice little $2 pop. The next move is going to have to reclaim this Bollinger Band here. Um, NBAC, now again, another SPAC name. Uh, 16, 16, 10 needs to build. Here was NBAC. Right, it took out the 16, 16, 10, uh, traded up to like 16, 85. Again, really needs to confirm the 17 dollar level to go. But again, these spacs are really hot. Uh, Gilead uh, never came to 62. Paychecks, I still like a 95, never got there. Uh, Las Vegas Sands 61 needs to build, never got there. Uh, MTDR needs to confirm that 12, never got there. Traded like 11.95. Uh, BK, I, I still like I still like Booking.com, guys. I really do. For all you guys who are trading on the option side. This thing is super close, folks. Keep an eye on this thing. This thing starts building above this 2140 area. This BKNG is going to light up, so keep an eye on that. Uh, ZS, I still like. Uh, never got close to there. And again, obviously, best stock ever. Uh, BIGC, right? BIGC, nice move there. ASAN, I still like. Never got uh, to the highs there. You know, going nuts. $700 call buyer coming in. Uh, highs on deck on Netflix, really big move there. Nice little pop there, uh, NK1070 needs to build. Here was NK, right, the lunchtime pivot, right? Took out the 1070, uh, traded to 1125, not bad. Not a bad move, I still like it, still like it if it confirms today's prices. Uh, nice grind on ABAC, nice spike there. Uh, you know, Netflix looks really, really good, and that's about it. So, you know, again, another day. Uh, another, you know, day of aggr super aggressive buying, um, you know, but again, I would love to see the whole group kind of wake up uh, and start putting in a collective effort to start, you know, running these stops. Because again, it just doesn't make sense to me why uh, Alibaba is not participating, why, Bob, uh, why Amazon, and NVIDIA, they're not participating at all. But again, the great thing about the market is I don't need to figure it out and just trade what's in front of you guys. Have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.